Welcome to all the learners again. Today is a continuation of what we did in the earlier class. I hope all of you have been able to follow and watch those what we did in the last week. For the next few classes, it will all be a continuation. Today, I have given the topic to Bharat as LSRW and grammar. The story remains the same. This entire four or five lectures, which I will do for you, will all be based on a single story, which I have told you. Already I read out the story to you from Tales and Parables of Sri Ramakrishna, and the title of the story was The Chameleon. I hope all of you did a lot of homework, those who are seeing me for the second time on Zoom. First day, I have read out the story to you. I expected all of you to either find that story and read it or to listen to the reading many times so that you could copy down that story and have the story with you because all the lessons of grammar, etc., I will be doing from that story. Now, if you don't have that story, then somehow you have to get that story and follow it. Once you follow the story with me, then you will find that you can do it with any story, any article, any news item, anything which you have. Some few sentences of English you can use for learning further. Just now I got a mail before I started your lesson and that mail says, Madam, I have nobody to practice. How will I practice? Please practice alone. Remember how people play solitaire? There are not two players. There is only a single player. That player plays with himself or herself. Many people play chess. By being two red, white and black coins, they keep moving and they start playing. So if you want to learn a language, please practice with yourself. Do not wait for others. You have to go on practicing with yourself in order to learn a language. Now, let me start by telling you again, I'm reminding you only about LSRW. Listening and reading are for your own benefit. That is, it teaches you language. When you want to listen or when you want to read, you must remember that reading aloud is very good. So if you have the story with you, Please read it loudly. Once you read it loudly, you are listening and reading. Don't do it only once. Do it many times. Because if you go on listening and reading, you will be able to get a lot of grammar, a lot of pronunciation and spelling, punctuation, vocabulary. Everything comes to you from that point. Please remember that many of you are there who want to learn grammar formally as a foundation. So I thought I would suggest to you that recently I came across some very good books. These are books for children. They are used in schools, class one to eight. They are from Arrow Publications. You can search for Arrow Publications online. They have a website also, arrowpublicationsindia.com. You can search there. Perfect Grammar, one of them is called, and the other is called Grammar Treasure. These books, children need eight years to learn from them. But you are not children, you are adult learners. So you can buy either of the books. Some of you have money to spare, then you can buy. Many of you might not have money, then you have to learn on your own. You can't buy the book. Buy also the key. The key is the answers. So you have the book, you have the key, and you will find that with the help of the book and the key, you can do these exercises of grammar, vocabulary, writing skills. All these things are there in the book. This you have to do hundreds of times. Do the exercise once, correct it. Then do the exercise again, correct it. Doesn't matter if you get mistakes every time. 
The answers are with you. Go on correcting. So get yourself these Arrow Publications books. I found them very good. And you can start your practice. But that is only the foundation. It is not everything else. When you have this foundation, you will need to practice. Then comes LSRW. So listening and reading, do it from ordinary English texts. I have taken this text of Tales and Parables of Sri Ramakrishna. You can take that or you can take any other text. Now we come to writing, which I have asked you to do. Listen to this and write down everything which you listen. Listen one sentence, stop the video, write it, write that one sentence. It is like dictation. Then listen to another sentence. Then you write it down. Like that you can write. Those of you who know shorthand can write it while I speak. But others cannot do that. They have to write in the long hand. And this you will go on practicing by writing. Improve your handwriting also. I'm sure Impact must be inviting people to give you lectures on how to improve your handwriting. Today we only use the keyboard. We don't use handwriting. But if you use handwriting, that also is very useful. Now we come to the most important aspect, and that is speaking, L-S-R-W, listening, speaking, reading, writing. So speaking is where all of you have a problem. Now, speak to yourself for two or three minutes on any topic of your choice. Now you can choose a topic like the story, chameleon. What is a chameleon? Find out what is a chameleon. You read it on Google and then you speak about the chameleon for a few minutes. You have already heard the story that many people see the chameleon in a forest and they find that the chameleon is of different colors. So they start arguing with each other and then they ask a person who sits under the same tree all the time and he says that the chameleon has many colors. It is not necessarily a single color, but it has many colors. So you can imagine that the quarrel is resolved. You can speak for two, three minutes on this story. Or I told you that this is from a book called Tales and Parables. What does a tale and parable mean? Check it out. Tale means stories. Parables are stories with morals. So you can speak for five minutes or you can speak for two minutes on this topic, tales, or on this topic, parables. All great people have used parables to teach lessons. You can read the parables of Christ also online. There are so many parables, sometimes only one or two sentences, sometimes long parables. So read them and speak them aloud. By reading, you get the information and then you speak aloud. Now, I have told you that this book, Tales and Parables, are by Sri Ramakrishna. So check out Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. He was a saint of the 19th century who lived in Dakshineshwar Kali Temple. So you have so many topics now. Speak about Sri Ramakrishna's life. Speak about the Dakshineshwar Kali Temple speak about the teachings of Ramakrishna. What did he say? He said, all religions are true. They are different paths leading to the same goal. And that goal is the final realization of God. This is what he said. He said, don't think any religion is better than any religion. They are like different paths. So learning all this, you have so many ideas to speak. Then you speak about his childhood. He's, you can speak about his disciples like Swami Vivekananda. You can speak about so many things. So write down the names of the titles of some topics which you like. Write down a variety of ideas which come to your mind. After writing down, one by one you speak. In this way, if you can't speak extempore, you write them first. In this way, you are speak, uh, you're practicing writing and speaking. You are also practicing listening and reading.
by reading these stories. It's a big book. It has about uh, 273 pages. You can read so many stories. What I read you is only one page. Last class, I will read out the last paragraph of this story, which I did not read. That is the moral lesson which we learned. So we can use these stories for learning English and we can concentrate on various aspects of English. Now we come to the grammar part. I told you that first you, for foundation of grammar, for learning grammar, try to recollect what you studied in your school and college. Many of you might not have studied in your school and college. Many of you might feel that you want to learn grammar freshly, new again, like as though you were in school. So go to Impact Publications India website, search for these two books, which I gave you the names of. Turn to the earlier part of the video, you'll get the names. I'm not going to repeat them. And then get those books copies for yourself. If you are a group of learners, buy one copy, that is enough. If you are individual learners, buy one copy for yourself. But only if you can afford to spend money. Many times I get mail saying, Madam, do you have any course? I would like to pay the course fees and join. I don't have any course, please understand. I don't take any courses. I don't charge any money. So you can't learn like that. You can learn by buying these books from Arrow Publications, learning it yourself and practicing it through reading newer and newer stories and so on. So the other day, I told you something about grammar. Now I'm coming to the second part of today's topic. First part, I have spoken LSRW. I gave you many suggestions for LSRW. Now I'm going to talk about grammar. I might take a light, slightly longer class today because we started early. I said 12, but we started early. In the earlier part, I have mentioned LSRW. Remember, unless you practice, nothing happens. You might listen to my videos for the rest of your life all the hours of the day and night, 24 hours. But that will not improve you. That will not help you. What you need to do is to practice it yourself. Impact is giving you an opportunity to learn. But learning is only one part. Practicing is major part. If learning is 10% or 20%, practice is 80%. So unless each one of you does it, you don't get it. So the other day I told you much about articles. I told you about noun a little. I told you also about verbs, adjective, and I also told you about preposition and conjunction. I don't know how many of you heard it the other day, but I think you can hear it again also because recorded version must be there. You must remember that I am continuing from where I stopped the other day. The other day, I explained to you the indefinite article by telling you a man, a wood, a small animal, and a tree. Now, today I'm going to talk to you not only about indefinite article, but also about the definite article. But before doing that, I would like to begin with a noun. The noun is the first thing we learn in English. But the noun is only, not only a simple noun, you know, a name. Any name we call as a noun. So whatever is your name, my name is Sumita Roy. So my name is a noun. It's called a proper noun. Bharat's name is Gampa Aditya Bharat. These are all proper nouns. So you like that, you, each of you has a name that is a noun. We are all in Hyderabad. You must be from different places. I don't know where all you are from. But Hyderabad is a proper noun. Telangana of our state, the name of our state is Telangana. And that also is a proper noun. We live in a country called India. India is a name, but it is a proper noun. Like that, we have names which are all proper nouns but we also have common nouns. 
look at this sentence. A man entered a wood and saw an, a, a small animal on a tree. All the four nouns in this sentence, the man, a wood, a small animal, and also a tree. This is, these four nouns are all singular prop, uh, common nouns. They are common. A man does not mean any single individual. It means one individual out of a group of individuals who can all be called a man, a man, a man for each of them. So it is a common noun. It can be used as a common noun. Now this common noun refers to a human individual. So in a human individual, we can also have gender. So instead of saying a man, I can say a woman. It becomes masculine gender to feminine gender. This also you have to learn when you're learning a noun, you have to learn a gender. There might be a common gender also, which refers to both men and women. For instance, a parent. A parent can be a father, which is masculine, or a mother, which is feminine. So we call it parent. It's called common gender. Then we come to a teacher. A teacher may be a male teacher or a female teacher. We don't differentiate. We can say sir or madam, but we don't differentiate teacher. So the word teacher is a common gender. Like that, we have many words which are common. Today, we don't say actor, actress or hero, heroine. We use the word actor to refer to both of them, masculine and feminine. This I told you the other day is called gender neutrality. This new word you're learning, gender neutrality. So those of you who have excellent English already know it. Those of you who have no English, they can learn these new words. Very important for your vocabulary. Then we have man is a man, one. We also have what is called as Singular and plural. This is called in English as number. So we say man, we say men. We say wood, we say woods. Then we say animal, we say animals. Then we say tree, we say trees. These are all singular and plural. Please remember that singular refers to one. Plural refers to more than one. This happens in the case of nouns. Now we are only talking about nouns. So the noun is a word which can have a gender. It can also have a number. That is, it can indicate one or more than one. But there are certain nouns in English which are not able to show this number. For instance, look at water. We cannot say one water and two waters. We have to remember that one drop is also called water. An ocean pool is also called water. If you go to the seaside, what you see is a huge body of water, but it's still called water. So this is called uncountable noun. Whereas man and tree are countable nouns, water and milk and oil and money kindness, generosity, all the abstract nouns are all uncountable. We cannot say one kilo of love. Love is uncountable. It cannot be counted as love and loves. So we have these countable, uncountable nouns. When you are reading this story, first you must find out what are the nouns that are there in the story. For this, you require the story with you. I can't read the story to you again. So if you have written down the story, look at the story and find out what are the nouns that are there in the story. Are they nouns which have singular or plural? Is the singular used or is the plural used? Then find out which of the nouns have a gender, masculine, feminine, or neuter, or common gender. Whichever noun doesn't have masculine or feminine gender, we call it as the neuter gender. For instance, the word animal. 
we cannot have the animal as another gender we can also have animals with names which have gender for instance you can have a lion you can have a lioness you can have a tiger and tigress you can have a peacock and a pea hen or you can have a cock and you can have a hen these are all gender but when you use the word animal like you use the pers the word person then it is not gendered it's common it is common to all then we have common a tree does not have a gender so we call it as a neuter gender wood does not have a gender like that a table or a chair or a pencil or a book these do not have gender so we classify them as neuter gender these are all very significant points for you when you are studying a noun then we have the noun as a case remember i told you subject and object now in this sentence a man entered a wood a man is the subject and a wood is the object because it the man entered the work of the verb is done by the subject and where the work is done is the object on what the work has an impact that is the object so we have the wood where did the man go the man entered the wood so the wood becomes the object so this is the subject case and object case we call it subject and object cases there is a third case also and that is the case which we call possessive so we say this is the man's words the man is going and describing that the animal is red in color or we say the animal's color we put apostrophe s this is what we call as the case the case is the third thing which you have to learn apart from learning the types of nouns i told you proper noun all names of specific persons specific places common noun ordinarily it can use be used for everything i gave you the title of the book remember tales and parables that is a proper noun if i say this book it is a common noun but it, because it can be the book can be used for other nouns or other books also not for only this one book tales and parables of sri ramakrishna so parables name is common but if you apply to the parable which we are reading that is the chameleon then the it becomes a proper noun it can be changed so for proper and common then we have what is called as collective nouns suppose we have a group of people who are throwing stones we call it as a mob suppose we have a group of people who are watching a movie we call it as audience suppose they are watching a cricket match the same group is called spectators so this is a collective noun if a group of people are going in a ship who work in the ship we call it as a crew if a group of people are playing a game we call it a team if they are working on a project we call it a team so this single word which represents a group is called a collective noun then we have abstract nouns abstract implies we can't see it we can only experience it we can only imagine or feel it i gave you examples like kindness generosity love and affection i gave you all these examples to explain to you so when you look at any passage any story because i have asked bharat to call this learning english through stories everybody reads a story suppose you are reading a story in your mother tongue you have a great advantage now try to make that story into english then after writing down that story in english read it find out whether you are able to read it well listen to it speak about the story write the story then start practicing grammar underline all the nouns identify are they proper noun common abstract or collective then try to identify singular or plural 
then is it have a gender then it does it have subject or object case or possessive case like that you will learn all the nouns now let me try to identify for you the nouns which are there in this story already in the first sentence i have told you there are four nouns man wood animal and tree all of them i have identified as a common noun wood can also be a material noun when it is used for making furniture we call the wood as a material noun gold as material noun steel as material noun but here the wood means a forest a forest is a common noun it is not a material noun then there is again the next sentence another man man is a noun then seen a creature a creature is a noun then tree again comes tree is a noun then again the word man comes then many times the word man comes and then of course you have the word dispute you have the word dispute now you will find dispute means quarrel so this is also a noun a dispute or a quarrel is also what we call a noun because it's a name of something then again the word man and animal many times the words come so you can imagine how by practicing a single story you are able to find out how a noun is used the same noun again and again remember that when we were children we were taught by repetition repetition is a wonderful way of learning that is why in our culture also we have the concept of repeating the mantra if you repeat the mantra many times then you are getting mental concentration you are learning many things so this is how it is you look at the nouns and you find that there are so many repetitions so go on repeating them yourself next to the noun very important is the pronoun i'll read out the second sentence to you the first sentence which we read the other day once a man entered a wood and saw a small animal on a tree what is the second sentence he came back and told another man that he had seen a creature of a beautiful red color on a certain tree now look at the word man no longer the word man is used instead we say he he is a pronoun like that all pronouns are used you will find the entire pronoun chart in one of the impact videos on youtube i have done this in great detail the chart also i showed on a powerpoint slide i am sure the chart must be there because i have not seen any of these impact videos i can't tell you certainly what is there and where it is there this much hard work all the learners have to do i am doing lot of hard work in my old age by telling you how to do it but i can't do it for you please remember we have a saying in english you can take a horse to the water but you can't make it drink that means if the horse is thirsty the horse will drink so whoever wants to learn will learn it is not because i am teaching that you have to learn you learn because you want to learn you have the thirst of learning you have that desire of learning that is the only way you will learn so you look at this sentence there is the pronoun i also saw that animal so he we have we have i he is there many times and it is there it was yellow it for the animal many times they have used they they for a group of people who were quarreling the word they is used all these are pronouns the pronouns work is to be used instead of a noun but the pronoun has many other functions please remember the pronoun is not only the personal pronoun which is used in this sentence in this story which you have again and again 
being repeated, it is repeated many times, I is repeated, then they and he are repeated many times. So try to find the entire list of personal pronouns. Then also find, I gave you already the name of the book and the publication, Arrow Publishers book. They will give you all the pronouns. They'll give you many exercises, how to improve your pronouns, what are the types of pronouns and so on. So by reading first grammar, you build the foundation. By reading the grammar book, by doing the grammar exercises, a foundation comes to you. On the foundation, you can start building. And what is your building? The rooms and the kitchen and the bathroom and the sitting room and living room. That is your building. But what is this building? This building is LSRW. So the basic foundation comes from all the language skills, grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, spelling, punctuation. That is your foundation. To learn that, you require a book. That is why since thousands of people are saying, Madam, give a book. Madam, give a book. I can't give you a sim single book. So I'm telling you what good English medium students learn in their schools from these books in eight years. You don't need eight years. You buy the Arrow publications, you sit with that, and you can finish it in a few days or a few months. One book might take you one day if you concentrate the whole day on the book. Check up the answers. You might get many mistakes. Don't get disheartened. Do the exercise again. You will find that you are learning nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, all these from this book. Once you have mastered this in practice by learning the theory and doing some exercises, those are stray sentences, you know? A grammar book or a book which teaches you vocabulary gives you only disconnected sentences. That's good, very good for basic learning. But now you are learning communication. I saw that day an impact Dr. Modi ji, Vivek Modi ji is speaking to you. I'm very fond of Vivek Modi. He speaks very well and he give, gave you wonderful ideas, I'm sure. I did not hear the whole thing, but I'm sure you can combine what I'm telling you, what he's telling you, all these to improve your communication. To improve your communication, first what you require is the basic grammar. I'm trying to tell you how once you have mastered that basic grammar, you can check the application of grammar by reading these stories. One story only I'm telling you, and I'm telling you all the items of grammar. Now let me go on to the next very important grammar item, and that is a verb. A verb is very important because we have many types of verbs. I told you the word entered. Then I told you the word saw. Then I, the next sentence has also the word told. Then the uh, next sentence has replied. You can see all these are past tense verbs. So the past tense is a form of tense for which you have to learn the present tense, the past tense, the future also. Then you have to learn different types of tense. What is a simple tense? What is a progressive tense or continuous tense? What is the perfect tense? And what is the perfect continuous tense? Again, in one video, all these 12 tense divisions are there in a slide, PowerPoint slide. If you Write down all the verbs which you know. Look at the story which is telling you. A man entered the wood. He saw an animal. He came back. He told his friend. Then he had seen. Had seen is the past perfect tense. How will you know? You will know only if you write down all the verbs you know. Enter. Tell. See. Reply. All these verbs are used. Then uh, you know, you have also contradicted. So the verb is contradict. Insisted, the verb is insist. Arrived, the verb is arrived. Then you have 
quarrel then you have start then you have settle all these verbs are there in the story make a list of all these verbs then make a chart all the 12 columns in the chart now write down enter present tense entered past tense will or shall enter future tense then is entering present continuous tense was entering past continuous tense had entered past perfect tense have entered present perfect tense how will you learn you will learn if you have the chart with you again go to the book practice this by practicing many times simple present tense by practicing many times present continuous tense they will stay in your memory then when you read the story you will be able to identify oh this is a past tense this is simple past tense this is a simple future tense this is a past perfect tense like that you will be able to make the benefit from this story the story will help you immensely for practicing the language not for learning grammar for learning grammar we need a grammar book and then for practicing most of the videos which i have said i have assumed that you already know this basic grammar but then i am getting thousands of mails these days and these thousands of mails are telling me madam please tell about a grammar book so today in this video i have mentioned to you this grammar book after practicing this maybe it will take you 6 months to practice it 100 times eight books are there and you have to practice them scores of times dozens of times not once one practice never helps anybody you go on practicing it even if the sentences come correct practice it 10 more times when you're getting mistakes practice them hundreds of times when you're not making any mistake then you practice at least 10 times then you have other grammar items also items like preposition preposition needs a lot of practice because most people make mistakes in preposition once you have learned the prepositions from the grammar book then what you will do is whenever you come across english you will be very vigilant you will be very careful and notice how the preposition is used remember i told you on a tree then the next sentence says of a beautiful color on a tree then the next sentence says into the wood and then the next sentence says that you know uh, uh on being asked like that you have to search where are the prepositions what is the function which the preposition is carrying out once you do this again and again if you practice you will find that when you speak your prepositions are coming out correctly unless you look at them in a real life context just the grammar book is not enough but you cannot look at the real life context like i'm telling you learning english through stories unless you have a foundation and that foundation comes to you from the book so take the book look at all the exercises all the grammar which the book teaches you all what we call as parts of speech noun pronoun verb adjective adverb preposition conjunction interjection these are all the parts of speech in english so start by reading noun how many types of noun are there then read pronoun how many types of pronoun are there what is their function then see the story see the story which you are reading and try to find are there any pronouns in the story are there any nouns in the story then come to verbs what are the different kinds of verbs what are the function of these verbs and then you will be able to see that each of these verbs somewhere or the other the types will come in the story which you are reading then this will reinforce your english you know we have you seen the advertisement of 
plastic or I mean of cement or steel, they say they reinforce. So when you, anything which you want to make strong, you want to make anything strong, we call it as reinforce. Next class, when I meet you, I will talk to you about vocabulary. So Bharat can note this, that the next lecture will be on vocabulary. I will tell you, today I have mentioned only grammar. I told you LSRW and then of course you have the ability to learn. So this much is enough about grammar. Impact has been telling you, you can ask questions. I'll be very happy if you ask questions. I don't know how I will get the questions. Will I be able to hear Bharat? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. If I hear your question. If anyone has a question, kindly raise the hand or they can type. Your, video, your audio is not very clear, uh, Bharat. I can't make out what you're saying. Okay, fine, fine. There is one question from the uh, past videos. Madam, uh, there is tell one, me, tell me. Uh, there is one question. I'm that, coming close to the mic. Yes, yes, I can understand. Uh, yes, I'm going to ask now. Yeah, tell me. The very good re reviews of the last uh, uh, last lecture of uh, it is uploaded in YouTube, and many okay. of the uh, uh, asking uh, how to get the passion to teach the students even after retiring. <laughs> All of you are my passion because I learned English with a great difficulty, and I would like to tell you that all of you can also learn like me. English is not easy to learn either for me or for you. But what we need to do, we need to have a lot of hard work. I'm doing some hard work for you, even in my old age after retirement. I want you to see this and do hard work. Yes, ma'am. There is one more question. Can you please share your journey to become a teacher in English profession? Yes, there are, I get many, many mails from people who have done MA English and they want to become English teachers. In fact, I think today itself, I got two or three mails. Madam, I have done MA English, but I can't speak English. How to become an English teacher? Let me tell you first. The first quality of becoming an English teacher is that divide this into two parts, English and teacher. I will tell you one by one. First, your English must be perfect. You must have excellent English before you want to become teacher. And to become excellent in anything, we have only one mantra and that is self-effort. Self-effort means you have to learn yourself. Learn by teaching yourself. Don't depend on teachers like me. You have to learn it by making yourself the teacher, yourself the te student. Now come to the second word, teacher. How to become a good teacher? You must love your subject and you must love the learner. Don't think because learners don't know they are useless. The learners are the most precious tradition which we have. You know, the guru-shishya tradition, this is called. The shishya is the beloved of the guru. So lo love your students, love your subject. So those of you who love English can become English teachers, but you must start by loving your students. Try to share everything with your students. Don't think that my teaching is only eight hours per day. If you become a teacher, you have to teach 24 hours per day. Even when you're not teaching, you are a teacher. So never do any mistakes. Have good values. If Impact has, still has lockdown programs, after I finish three, four lectures on grammar, uh, vocabulary, spelling, punctuation, pronunciation, I will give you one video on self-improvement. That video, I will tell you how we have to cultivate values, how self-improvement comes. Values are most important today. We are losing our values. What is the value? The value which we should have is sincerity commitment these are what values a good teacher has when i got my first job people told me oh 
you got university job now you can stop teaching because with good salary nobody checks whether you are teaching or not there are no people to tell you you have to teach or punish you if you don't teach but you won't believe on the day i retired also i was taking my ma final class luckily or unluckily the vice chancellor was on rounds that day and then the vice chancellor came to my class he saw that i was teaching he spoke to the students for 2 minutes and went away that evening the usual tradition in osmania university is that the vice chancellor gives a farewell party to the retiring professors so two of us were retiring on that day october 31st 2017 then when the vice chancellor was speaking he said that i have never seen a teacher like professor sumita roy who teaches on the last day also because usually people stop teaching a few months before retirement they are busy filing their retirement papers and arranging for their pension and so on but madam was teaching today also why was she doing that i feel that while teaching i am really worshiping you know all of us do puja all of us do namaz all of us do prayers but what is the real prayer or namaz or puja for the teacher it is the classroom it is the student each student is your god if you are able to treat each student as your god then you are doing real religion all of us are very religious but what we worship is something which is only ritualistic we should forget the ritual and treat these young people treat these eager learners as our gods that is my journey of teaching i came into teaching with reluctance let me also tell you i didn't want to become a teacher i wanted to become everything else other than a teacher i said oh teaching oh my god once i started teaching i started enjoying and loving my job today i feel that the teaching profession is really the best profession when we say guru brahma guru vishnu we don't really say because the teacher gives us a new birth all of you become good english teachers whoever knows good english and whoever has commitment towards the student all the best uh, thank you madam there is one last question uh, okay as a teacher uh, mm. i have to complete uh, the uh, the portion for the academic year but mm. my all the students are unable to learn english all the all the uh, parents are complaining my son or my daughter unable to learn english even after the class <laughs> see nobody can learn english from anybody i will tell you what swami vivekananda said swami vivekananda said that all perfection is within you you must remember that no child can be taught we cannot teach a child we can only help the child to learn so all the videos or all the teachers or all the courses are only help for the child to learn what does the child need the child needs interest to learn most of them do not have the ability to show this interest so can we generate the interest in the child to learn yes we can by telling the child stories about what happens if they learn what happens if they don't learn people who don't learn anything suffer all their life people who learn a lot of other subjects but no english don't get good jobs people who learn only english and nothing else also don't succeed because only something is not enough we should know everything now if you want to improve anything just now i saw on the screen one uh, question about pronunciation yes, so suppose you want to learn pronunciation then what happens 
you have to have the desire to learn pronunciation. Now, I'm pronouncing English for half an hour. But what are you listening? You are only listening to my ideas. Nobody is listening to my pronunciation. Suppose you want to improve your pronunciation. My lecture of half an hour is only the guide to improve your pronunciation. What will you do? You will listen to one sentence. Then you will repeat that one sentence like I repeat it. Listen to how you are saying. Listen to how I am saying it. Have you seen children? These days, many mangoes are being sold because it's summer. Yes, so they say, Mamri Pandu, Mamri Pandu, and they go on the road. So the child hears it and repeats exactly the same pronunciation. The child doesn't know Telugu. The child speaks some other language, Hindi or Marathi at home. Doesn't know Telugu, Mamri Pandu, but pronounces beautiful Telugu by only imitating the sound of the seller of the mango. The mango seller is not a teacher. The mango seller is not even educated. He's a poor man who is selling mango on the road. But he's the teacher of pronunciation. How did he teach pronunciation? Not because he came and told you, see, today I'm taking a class in pronunciation. I'm teaching you Telugu pronunciation. The person only pronounced. So how did the learner learn? The learner learned because of the desire to learn. This small child enjoyed the sound of Mamadi Pandu. Therefore, the child pronounced it by using its own ability. So what am I telling you by this example? When you listen to my one half an hour video, what you have to do is listen to 10 seconds only at once. Not half an hour altogether. Listen 10 seconds. In 10 seconds, whatever I have pronounced, you pronounce. Then listen again. Compare your pronunciation to my pronunciation. Then you say, oh, madam said like this and I have said like this. Then again, listen to the same thing. Again, pronounce. After pronouncing five times, you will find you're pronouncing it exactly like I did or much better than me. You know, don't be like your teacher. Better than your teacher. So by looking at this pr pronunciation, you can learn. There are many ways of learning. We learned because we were not in the e-learning time. We learned from books. It is called Daniel Jones English Pronouncing Dictionary. It is still available. You can buy it. Daniel Jones English Pronouncing Dictionary. It has only pronunciation and nothing else. But it is a book. From a book you can't learn. You have to pronounce it to yourself. The book can help you to learn, but it can't pronounce for you. Today we have dictionary. You know, if you go to any dictionary on, uh, online, they have a mic. You press the mic, they pronounce. But they pronounce single words. They don't pronounce full sentences. So you look at, again, a video on YouTube. Many people have given their lectures on YouTube. The lecture need not be about English. It can be about a subject of your interest, or it can be news. What is happening to the COVID situation in Hyderabad? In English, it is being told to you. So don't only listen to the news, listen to the pronunciation. Then stop the news because it is there already recorded. Stop it, listen to it, only 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Absorb the pronunciation. Put the pronunciation in your mind and repeat the pronunciation till you get the correct pronunciation. Many people want to learn American English. There are so many videos on YouTube where Americans are speaking American English. Listen to that. Your English will become American. Because I have seen people who don't know English going to America. After five years, they come back. They speak excellent English with American accent. How did they learn? They learned by listening to other Americans. They listened in real life. They did not listen in a classroom from a teacher. So you don't need a teacher for learning. What you need is interest in learning. Okay? I hope I have told you how to improve 
by yourself, by your own interest, how to improve pronunciation specially. Thank you. Okay. So today's session is finished. Thank you. Now I do an, again another session on Thursday, same time, 12 o'clock. So today is Monday. Thursday is my next session. Topic is vocabulary. Okay. Story remains the same. The chameleon from the tales and parables of Sri Ramakrishna. Okay. okay. Namaste and be safe and be happy, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you.